The 45-year argument over New Jersey affordable housing got a good airing out today. The fight pits municipalities that want to protect their character against builders who want to build housing and advocates who want to open up the suburbs to minorities, veterans, and the disabled. Mayor after mayor came before the Assembly Housing Committee to complain that housing developers are using the law to try to gobble up their towns. A developer came in about uh, with one of those projects and, and uh, they asked for a density that's much more than we're comfortable with, which would impact our town. We, uh, Park Ridge has 9,000 residents, 3,500 doors. They wanted, uh, they said, give us roughly 1,000 units. And if you don't, we're going to go to a judge and ask for 2,000. And we're going to build affordable. That's not what this affordable process was meant to do. It's not meant to hold a gun to our heads. For years, a body called COA, the Council on Affordable Housing, determined the municipality's fair share of affordable housing need. Then COA went more abund, and the decisions about allocations reverted to superior courts, where they were in the 70s and 80s. Municipalities don't like it. At this point, I ask you to reinstate COA immediately. Get it out of the courts. Stop the endless chain of litigation. Give towns a chance to breathe and save taxpayer dollars. Mayors especially don't like the builder's remedy, which allows four market rate units to be built for every affordable unit a developer provides. We are required to build 306 affordable units, or approximately 1,530 total units. In a township, there's total 3,300 units now. We have approximately 10,000 residents in the course of the seven-year period our population will increase by 40 percent. The New Jersey Builders Association sees a state full of municipal officials dragging their feet. Some of the ideas we've heard today are, are worthy of real consideration. Some of them, frankly, are trying to move the ball backwards 20 years to, to or 30 or 40 years to pre-COA or early COA uh, uh, processes, and they don't work. We've seen it not work for 15, 20 years now, which is why the Supreme Court wound up with the decision in the first place, and frankly, which is why some of the settlement agreements now that are coming out are being reacted to so negatively by the towns, because they've been absent for so long. Then there are the advocates like Kevin Walsh of Fair Share Housing, who pushed to open up the suburbs in the name of integration. It is the fundamental problem in New Jersey is that municipalities use their zoning to exclude. They use their zoning to exclude people with disabilities. They use their zoning to exclude African American and Hispanic families. That is the fundamental problem. Walsh pointed to the demographics of the towns whose mayors testified. Where did the opposition come from today? Far Hills, not even 1% African American. Montvale, 1% African American. African American, Colts Neck, 1.7%, Bernards, 2%, Park Ridge, 1%. Republicans Holly Shapizi and John Bramnick objected. You may, through your testimony, throw race into this discussion. That's your prerogative. But I would submit that there are numbers of housing units that would be deemed overdevelopment. It's a hot button issue. You know, un, un, unfortunately, you know, um, when you talk about different people from the NJ Builders to the NAACP to people are talking about, you know, social justice, it's going to be hot. Today's hearing was just meant to open up the conversation, said Benji Wimberly, the new Housing Committee chairman. No legislation was considered, but that's next. At the State House, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News.